Welcome here to the Canton United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Clay. It's a joy and a, del a delight to be together as the family of God as we uh, come together to rejoice in the truth of our faith that the risen Christ is among us as we gather in his name this morning. Now, let us uh, prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we hear this morning our prelude from Jenna. This morning we are bringing to a close our message series based on the five senses by looking at our sense of touch and how we touch and know um, God's goodness. We're going to be talking about David's metaphor of a rock, uh, that God is like a rock, uh, you know, that's a... Uh, um, God is a firm foundation upon which to build our lives of faith. God is the one that is our refuge in the moments of, of hardship and trial and struggle and even joy and celebration. And just that's who God is. And that's what David wants the Israelites to hold on to. That's what I want us to hold on to. And we're going to have an opportunity to touch and know today in worship uh, because not only are we celebrating Simon's baptism this morning, we are going to be doing a congregational baptism, baptismal remembrance after the service, after the sermon as well. Uh, so I just want to invite you to uh, start just uh, getting. Um, your mind wrapped around those things that you have touched in your lives, those, those touch, touches and textures um, that, you, that have been kind of communicative for you um, and, and vital in your, in your, in your faith formation, because that's going to be our focus um, all day this morning. Um, so with that in mind, let us stand as we are comfortable for our responsive call to worship. Uh, your responses will be on the screen in large yellow text for you this morning. Dear friends in Christ, we are born, or we are the people of God, born of water and the Spirit. We remember God's faithfulness to Israel, bringing them from the captivity into freedom. the water of Christ's pierced side, for through his death and resurrection we are set free from sin and death and receive eternal life. We remember God's grace extended toward each of us through the water of our own baptism. Dear friends, through the water and the Spirit we are redeemed and reborn to live as Christ's disciples in the world. We touch the waters and know that God is Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is found in your United Methodist hymnal. It is on page, if I have the right thing, it's on page 383. We're going to sing together, This is a Day of New Beginnings. And then from the faith we sing, we'll sing, How Majestic is Your Name. Let's join together in song this morning.
Our opening prayer this morning is a unison prayer. Let us join our spirits and voice together at this time as we just invite God into our presence this morning. Together we pray. Loving God, you call us by name and claim us as your people. As we touch and know your goodness, renew in us your love. By the waters of our baptism, claim us anew through the mighty power of your great spirit. May your love and promise shine brightly over all of the world and bring us and all of the nations into a family of peace and compassion. Amen. Our next song, hymn this morning is, is I Sing the Mighty Power of God, the words of which are on page 152 of your United Methodist hymnal, uh, as well as on this screen for you this morning. So let's join together in song. <laughs> Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. For as we have sung, this is a day of new beginnings, a fresh start by your grace and opportunity to remember what was, but also push forward to what will be. For God, you are constantly in the business of doing new things and creating new things and creating in us, in the words of the psalmist, a clean heart over and over and over again. And that is your grace on display. Your grace that holds us in those moments when we don't know what's going on. Those times when the world seems senseless. When we feel let down. Disappointed or scared. Or just hopeless. God, in those moments you behold us. All of us. All of who we are is laid bare before your throne. And while that can be disconcerting sometimes and off-putting and a little bit scary, we trust you. We trust your love. We trust your power. And we trust that you will be who you have said over and over that you are. God, when we are tempted to forget, you have given us reminders in our world. 
through the things that we see, things we hear, things we smell, things we taste, and through things that we touch. You are near, and for that we are thankful. Because of your nearness, O oh God, we have uh, brought to you our joys and concerns. Those things that cheer us, those things that hurt, those things that I don't have answers for. And everything in between. And in bringing this to you, O oh God, you have hurt our hearts. And in the midst of prayer, we just ask you would hear our hearts once again as we pray for the person on our left. And the person on our right. Oh God, hear our hearts as we pray for one who is missing this morning. one who joins us online. God, know us in our fullness. Lead us in your paths for right, in your paths for your name's sake. Continue to challenge us. Continue to grow us. And continue to, to continue to help us know that you are good. And God, hear our hearts from the depths of who we are as we join our spirits and voices together in the words that Jesus used to teach us how to pray, saying, pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of Amen. As we uh, prepare for a baptism, and as we just kind of think again about... Um, just who we are as baptized persons and who we are in God's sight. We're going to sing together a song called Water, River, Spirit, Grace. It's in the faith we sing. And since it's one that is not familiar to us, I'm going to sing it one time and then invite us into singing it uh, together after that. So, I'm going to invite Pastor Steve Zebarth forward, as well as Simon and Lindsay, and we're going to um, celebrate a baptism this morning. I think uh, it's amazing how life comes full circle sometimes. Um, 34 years ago or so, 
I baptized this young man in uh, Gregory, South Dakota. Yep. And so it's a special honor for me to be here today uh, to baptize Simon as well. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Remember that it is Jesus who said, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. It is my honor to present Simon James Lundberg for holy baptism today. <laughs> You dropped your car, buddy. <laughs> On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, in presenting Simon for holy baptism, do you confess your faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? If so, answer, we, I do. I do. Do you accept as your duty and privilege to live before Simon a life that becomes a gospel, to exercise all godly care that he be brought up in the Christian faith, that he be taught the Holy Scriptures, and that he learned to give reverent attendance upon the private and public worship of God? If so, answer, I do. I do. Will you nurture this little one in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, he may be, accepted to, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, to confirm his faith as a full and responsible member of Christ's holy church, and to lead a Christian life? If so, answer, I will. I will. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm your rejection of sin, your acceptance of God's grace, and your commitment to Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. Do you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Simon now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Simon with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. What name is given this child? Simon James Lundberg. You want to bring that little guy over here? <laughs> Are you ready for this, buddy? Yeah? All right. <laughs> Simon James Lundberg, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Can you say amen? Huh? <laughs> You're scared to death, aren't you? I don't blame you. Yeah, go, buddy. Now it is our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Members of the household of God, I commend to your love and care. Simon James Lundberg, do all in your power to increase his faith Confirm his hope and perfect him in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members, together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything 
God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. For you? Baptismal certificate. And uh, I present that to you. I hope that your mom and dad will hang on to that for you. I hope. Yeah. You know what? As I was digging around through some boxes, I found my baptismal certificate. And that's an old one. <laughs> and here we have a baptismal candle. And what I'd like to request that you do is on the anniversary of his baptism, to light that, to talk about what that means uh, as a spiritual birthday for Simon each year, okay? Just as a reminder, okay? The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and in peace. Amen. <laughs> Let us now welcome our newest brother in the faith. Our scripture this morning comes to us from Psalm chapter 18, verses 1 through 6, and then verse 31 and 32. This is a psalm of David. David says, I love you, O God, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised so I shall be saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompassed me. The torrents of perdition assailed me. The cords of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. And from his temple, he heard my voice and my cry reached his ears. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock besides our God? the God who girded me with strength and made my way safe. Would you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be holy and acceptable to you. For you, O oh God, are our rock and you are our redeemer. And we give you thanks for who you are as we say together, Amen. So I want to ask you a question this morning. Have you ever had a rock stuck in your shoe? If you have, you know it. It's a pretty memorable experience. There is no pain quite like having a rock in your shoe. And if you have, you'll know it because a rock in your shoe makes a pretty apparent presence. And the crazy thing is that it doesn't even take that big of a rock for it to make its presence known. It doesn't take a very big rock for us to think, hmm, something's not quite right as I take that step. And maybe this is just me, and maybe hopefully not, but maybe this is just me. I find a weird sense of pride in going as long as I can without taking that rock out of my shoe. Like I can endure this, you know, overwhelming trial. Um, is that just me or am I just being lazy? Like, does anyone else have that, or am I just being lazy? I admit that that could be part of it, too. But having a rock stuck in our shoe can be such a nagging annoyance. And once we finally break down and remove the rock from our shoe, there is so much relief. We are so happy this minor inconvenience has been removed from us. 
In our scripture this morning, David is thinking back on all that he has endured in his life, and it is more than just a rock in his shoe. Because our scripture, Psalm 18, comes as David is thinking back in his life and thinking of the great and terrible history that he had with Saul. Saul, this one-time friend of his, Saul, whose jealousy and anger led to to him breathing threats against David's life, and how this all eventually came to an end, and Saul was, you know, gone. And at the end of it all, David is able to just live his life in relative freedom and in relative safety. When the Saul period of his life is over, he is able to rule as God has anointed him to do. And now looking back, he is able to celebrate the ways that God was made known during the entire terrible ordeal. And one of the commentaries I read this week pointed out that this is virtually the same song that David sings at the end of his life as recorded in 2 Samuel 22. And all likelihood is that David composed Psalm 18 as a younger man, but in his old age, David would look back with great gratitude and sing a song anew as he looked at his whole life. Because his life was one where he was able to touch and to know God's goodness. And in writing the way that he did, in writing our scripture the way that he did this morning, David wants all of Israel to have the same experience. And so in our scripture, David calls God a rock. And not a rock in someone's shoe, a rock that is much bigger. And what I find so brilliant in David's words is that David is giving to Israel a tangible reminder of God's goodness. And not only is a rock something that the Israelites could know what looked like and actually touch, David used this metaphor that was plentiful and this, pl- this metaphor that was common so that Israel could be constantly reminded that God is like a rock and that God is good, that they could touch and know God's goodness. And because the truth that was true for Israel is still true for us, that God is our rock, we can be honest about the fact that sometimes God can feel distant and God can feel disengaged from our human experience. Which is part of why we're doing this sermon series to remind us that God is as near as our, as our five senses, but it's also why David is writing to the Israelites. It's why David ba- bothers making this, this song at all. He gives to Israel a tangible reminder, a touchable way to re- be reminded of God's enduring presence and God's unending goodness. Because because he says to the Israelites, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God. And he repeats it again, my rock in whom I take refuge. This is who God is. The Lord is my rock. A rock. A touchable tangible, common experience. Rocks were all around Israel all of the time. And if God felt distance, rocks or distant, rocks certainly did not. And not only was this prevalent, but it was profoundly true. God is a rock. That's the prayer that we pray every time we hear a sermon together. We pray that God is our rock and our redeemer. This is who God is. God is our rock, our strong and steady and solid foundation, the one upon whom we build our lives. And so touching rocks, as Israel would have every single day of their lives, they would be reminded of who God is. And they'd be reminded of how God acts. They would touch and know that God is good. But David takes this metaphor and makes it even stronger by explaining in some detail the things that he touched and the things that he felt, not only emotionally, but even literally as he fled from Saul and hid. 
He said that the cords of death entangled him and snares confined him. He says that he felt bound and strangled and trapped. And he says that he called to God and continually touched and knew his goodness and God heard him. And when God heard him, David felt the earth tremble. When God heard him, David smelled the smoke that surrounded him. When God heard him, David felt the heat and the light of God's enduring presence, and he felt the hand of God pulling him. So David not only tells the people of Israel and so tells you and me what God felt like, but he also told the world what life could feel like and what life did feel like. And so he says to you and so he says to me this morning, touch and know that God is good. So he says to you and me this morning, know what God feels like. And know what it feels like to have God pull you from those things that ensnare you. Touch and know that God is good. So the question becomes this for us this morning. When have been those moments in life when we were tempted to forget what God felt like? When have we had a rock in our shoe that caused us this pain? And how did we find relief? How did we touch and know that God was good? Maybe it was by taking David's metaphor to heart and just running with it and carrying a rock in our pocket through, you know, through life, which was me most of college. I was talking about this message with my friend, Pastor Teresa Wetzel, and she mentioned that she has Anglican, or not Anglican, but Protestant prayer beads, which is kind of like a rosary with no bead for Mary. And just she would pray, either pray through that prayer bead or just hold on to it would be enough. We're a family that likes fuzzy blankets. And sometimes that's enough to know that God is good. I have a friend named Kira from college and she kept with her one of her dad's flannel shirts that when she was having a late night of study or having an exam the next day, she would wear that and be reminded of not only her father's love but of God's love as well. And maybe it's the waters of baptism. Maybe it's what Simon just touched and knew to know God's goodness. A person I always think about when I think about this idea of touching and knowing God's goodness is Martin Luther. Because despite being a famous theologian and a practitioner of the church, Martin Luther suffered from bouts of anxiety and depression and doubt. And what I find fascinating is that his doubt was not in in God, his doubt was in himself. He doubted his standing before God. He doubted the efficacy of his baptism, the, the power of his faith, and the work to which he had dedicated his life. And to combat this, he kept a baptismal font by his desk and a sign that says, Remember that you are baptized. And regularly, he would have this time of remembering his baptism by dipping his hand in the waters of baptism, making the sign of the cross on his forehead, and letting that be enough. By knowing in his heart of hearts that he was loved by God and that his grace was sufficient. Luther needed that moment to remember God's goodness in the same way that Israel needed the rock. And maybe you've come to worship this morning needing that same reminder. As we bring worship to a close, and not only worship at this message series, we have the opportunity to touch and know God's goodness through the waters of baptism. Because like a rock, these waters are a tangible and touchable reminder to touch and know that God is good. So if you come here this morning overwhelmed by a world that scoffs at religion, Remember your baptism. If you come here blindsided by busy weeks and packed schedules and just feeling like you're not doing anything well, remember your baptism. If you start to fear that more years are behind you than ahead of you, remember your baptism. And if you're wondering if all the good that we're doing and the ways that we're trying to reach people for Jesus and make disciples and make a difference is worth it, Remember your baptism. 
touch and know that God is good. And I assure you that it is better than a rock in your shoe. Friends, let us join together in a, in a, in a liturgy this morning, um, a reaffirmation of our baptismal covenant. It's going to be on the screen for you uh, this morning. Sisters and brothers in Christ, as we have heard this morning, through the sacrament of baptism, God's Spirit has been poured out upon water, water poured over and immersing us, water that flows freely for all who will receive it, water from the streams of God's saving power and justice, water that brings hope to all who thirst for righteousness, water that refreshes life, nurtures growth, and offers new birth. Dear friends in Christ, today we come to the waters to renew our commitments in each other's presence to the Christ who has raised us, the Spirit who has birthed us, and God the Creator who is making all things new. And so I ask you, will you turn away from the powers of sin and death? We renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of our sin. Dear friends, will you let the Spirit use you as prophets to the powers that be? Will you proclaim the good news and live as disciples of Jesus Christ? We confess Jesus Christ as our Savior, for our whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as our Lord in union with the Church, which Christ has opened to the people of all ages, nations, and races. Will you be living witnesses to the gospel, individually and together, wherever you are and in all that you do? Dear friends, will you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament? We affirm and teach the faith of the whole church as we put our trust in God, the Creator Almighty, in Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Dear friends in Christ, the Spirit of the Lord is with us. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Let us join together in responsive prayer. Almighty God, the life you birthed in us by baptism into Jesus Christ will never die. Your justice never fails. Your mercy is everlasting. But sometimes we try. We try to block the flow. We redirect the winds of the Spirit, or we walk so far away from the life-giving stream that we do not hear its sound and we forget its power. We parch ourselves. We are God, your God. Come, refresh us. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon these waters. Come upon these waters. Let these waters be, us, be to us drops of your mercy. Let the waters remind us of your righteousness and justice. Let these waters renew in us the resurrection power of Jesus. Eternal God, one in three and three in one. All glory is yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Remember, friends, that you are baptized. And at this time, I invite those that are baptized to come forward and just uh, dip your hands in a bowl of water, make the sign of the cross on your forehead, and touch and know that God is good. Would you pray with me? Holy God, we have touched and we have known. We have remembered the promises of our baptism that are true in you. And we hold fast to that truth. When you feel distant, when life feels weird, when we feel what David felt, we reach out and we touch. And we know that you are good. Let this be our constant reminder, as you are our constant hope. In your name we pray. Amen. As we come to bring worship to a close, let us stand and sing together. It's going to be uh, out of the faith we sing on page 2238. 48. 2248. A song called Baptized in Water. We're going to sing the first verse only. Uh, Baptized in Water.
Please join me in our responsive benediction. Dear friends in Christ, touch and know that God is good. These waters of baptism are a sign of covenant between God and the church. It testifies to the washing away of sin. It, symbolizes rebirth. it embodies our adoption into God's family. It to the resurrection of Christ. Dear friends, in baptism we put on the fresh garment of Christ. In baptism we are sealed with the holy water. Thanks be to God, for God is good. Go in peace, serve the Lord, and know that you are baptized, and know that you are loved by God, and let us help other people know that as well. Amen.